Good evening to all. Uh, very happy to welcome all of you to yet another edition of Able Talk. We will be uh, starting in a few minutes as soon as the yeah our faculty for today is Mrs. Liji Santosh and uh, good evening, ma'am. Happy to have you with us. Yeah. So once again. Good evening, good evening to yet another edition of Able Talk. Today, as always, we are having an expert on board. And uh, today's topic is enabling parents to comprehend empowering communicative patterns. And uh, we have on board today with us uh, Mrs. Liji Santosh, a senior consultant at uh, Grace Speech and Hearing Center. Uh, she has she has been a great pioneer in the field of uh, speech therapy and speech language pathology. Very happy to have you with us, ma'am. And as always, a little about our very own Abelora. Okay, uh, so a very happy news is that. As you all know, Abelora is India's largest ecosystem, India's first and largest ecosystem for people with disabilities. And we believe in enabling and empowering people with disabilities. And we are an exclusive digital platform of products and service providers for PWDs. And the happy news is that our customer service app, the Abelora customer service app was launched on April 5th. Uh, we had in-house celebrations. And um, so team Abelora has added another feather to the cap uh, with our uh, customer support app. Not only that, we uh, have a summer camp in the Anvil and uh, the summer camp is a five week camp starting from April 25th. So as always, as you all know, uh, Abelora focuses on education, travel and sports. So we are going to, with regard to the summer camp, we are going to focus on education, sports, travel and uh, social skills, art and craft, reading, writing, handwriting, money concepts, and a lot more travel, activities of daily life, a lot more special education inputs, eye hand coordination, a little bit of early intervention. And with regard to sports, we are going to have uh, skill-based training as always where we hone the skill sets of the children and then match it with the sport and uh, four days a week we are going to have um, indoor classes that is in-house classes and on Fridays we are going to take our uh, students who are going to enroll to different places like a mall or a movie or to the park or to the beach so any public space we are going to take children to the public space this is going to be the whole concept of the uh, summer camp to enable and empower persons with disabilities making them independent and making them to pave a way for their independent living so that's about the Abelora news for the week. So getting back to Able Talk for today, let me start with Good evening, Archana. Hi. Mute are you are muted. Good evening, Mira Valaji, ma'am. Yes. Haran, how are you? I am fine, ma'am. How are you, ma'am? Yeah, good. Uh, yesterday I went to the office. Yeah, 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 we will talk later. We will talk later. 
So I was muted, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. So from April twenty fifth, that summer camp is going to start, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Which place is the April twenty fifth? Uh, that we will let you know, ma'am. April twenty fifth is going to be a Belora's summer camp, and it is going to be for one month, April twenty fifth to May twenty fifth. So we okay. are going to have a lot of activities like uh, based yes. on education, sports, travel. and ads and social skills so we are going to hone the social skills of our children and young adults who are going to enroll with us and we are going to have a lot of fun activities planned for the summer camp we are going to have handwriting classes we are going to have um art and craft we are going to have special education based classes activities of daily life based classes where we are going to pave a way for the independent living of uh, our children and um, so we are going to teach them a little bit of money concept we are going to take them each friday to different public spaces like a park a beach a mall or a movie so all these activities have been planned so this is from april 25th to may 25th it's a five week summer camp and uh, so this is the whole plan so and we are very happy about our customer service app launch also which happened on april 5th yeah So, so we are happy to welcome our chief guest today. Yes. So our chief guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, yeah. It's my pleasure. Good. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So very happy to have you, ma'am. And uh, yeah. Um, good evening, all. Uh, shall I start? One second, ma'am. so uh, i'll just introduce liji ma'am uh, yeah so uh, ms liji santosh is consultant and senior speech language pathologist and audiologist she is the senior uh, consultant at grace speech and hearing center she is a hanen and prompt certified professional with 20 plus years of experience in this field she is a trained Comdeal practitioner and early intervention therapist who has done many certifications like brain gym, one not one, two not one, and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. She has many. Uh, she holds the mastery of handling clients across different modalities, having explored avenues of pra private practice and collaborative practice. She also delivers lectures and. uh lectures for students and parents uh she has been practicing at various uh, institutes and she is as i said earlier she is a pioneer in the field of speech and speech language pathology very happy to have you ma'am and welcome to able talk thank you so much for that very uh, good introduction thank you uh, and it's my privilege to you know be with all of you all and uh, you so just allow me to just share my presentation i'll be sharing it from my other app just give me a minute audible ma'am can you hear me now yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yeah. Yeah. so uh, uh, good evening all today i will be talking about enabling parents to comprehend empowering communicative patterns
and it's one of my favorite area also talking about communication because you know how much ever you talk about communication it's it's like an ocean the depth you go is more deeper and deeper so it's my privilege to talk to all of you all and uh, i don't know whether you heard me say the first part uh, thank you for that very good introduction that you have given arshana thank you ma'am and uh, i am happy to be a part of able or okay to start with the presentation i think i have i will start with what is communication so what as i think everybody would have heard the same thing you know what's communication communication so communication is a process everybody knows it's sending and receiving in, in, uh, information it's a two way means of communicating forms of thoughts opinions ideas between two or more individuals in building a purpose of understanding see uh, what happens in most of the time is we try to communicate in one way that is like it would be either we speak and we ask them to just listen it will be like a linear way authoritative and it's very limited when it's a one way communication but usually our children would expect a two way com- communication where it should be interactive it should it should have an equal feedback like you know that the the the, send, the person who sends the message should uh, you know wait for the other person to uh, get the reply also so you should see the communication has to go uh, together like it's it's feedback oriented and the way you communicate with your child does not only teach that uh, how to communicate but it also develops a lot of emotional uh, characteristics and how that 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 will uh, later part of their life because you know initially when we uh, when we when we do a lot of one way communication it actually uh, hinders the child's communicative development itself so we have two types of develop, uh, communication like all of us know like it's a verbal and non verbal communication so coming to verbal communication as we all know it is nothing but it's made of sounds the spoken language that we speak and it also consists of speaking uh, listening reading and writing so oral communication is spoken form and it is actually influenced by the volumes like if i am going to speak very softly that that again conveys a different meaning the speed so i have to know how much of speed i have to use and in which place how uh, how is my tone of voice the clarity of speech has plays a lot of role in the verbal communication written communication is also uh, coming under the verbal communication because it's written symbols which uh, again conveys a lot of vocabulary so there should be uh, a, the grammar comes here uh, in 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 terms of written communication so this is influenced by grammar vocabulary and clarity of language so now coming to uh, what is non verbal communication non verbal communication is both intentional and unintentional communication through some of our body language like now when i speak i'm showing us some actions so that shows that adds to my uh, you know words that i speak so it it uses a lot of signs symbols and non verbal communication can also go without a verbal communication so most of our children have non verbal communication but we don't Uh, encourage that part of the communication most of us emphasize only on the verbal part so we should not uh, leave the non verbal communication that is what i am going to talk about in the later part of the uh, presentation so types of non verbal communication is body language facial expression eye gaze and gestures and also alternate augmentative and alternative communication we'll we'll see about this later part of this uh, presentation okay so the next one so to develop communication we need certain prerequisites we need to have some foundation for us or some prerequisites that is that uh, without that the good communication skills cannot develop so for example the first one is sensory ability so you all know that we all have senses and the senses gathers a lot of information so when one of our senses is having an issue then there is a communication breakdown similarly with the motor abilities the child's muscles bones they all uh, grow they, they move so every movement the child makes and there is an understanding points and the child has to follow that pointing where uh, that pers- that mother is pointing and then look back at the mother so that gives you a good joint attention so uh, so they they look at the object and then look back at you so using gestures pointing along with eye gaze to show the child where 
to direct his or her focus. Practicing joint attention in your child's natural environment can help the skill of generalizing from communicative and social success at home to success in school and in community. So, you know, you, ha you have to uh, uh, try to use a lot of, you know, language models like commenting. See, you, you are, uh, did you see that ball? That's a big ball. That's a big round ball. Okay, let's bounce, bounce, bounce the ball. So these are the way how you comment at it. Pointing. So when you point at the ball, the child looks at the ball and then looks back at you. So adding visual clues, giving some pictures to represent the ball. So giving all this can enhance the joint attention skills. So these are some strategies that I'm saying. So next we have the visual and auditory awareness. So visual and auditory awareness, like, you know, like uh, some of the strategies are watching actions that take place. That you know, when, when a car is moving, you're seeing how the car moves, uh, pointing, uh, pointing at objects and encouraging, encouraging the child to look at them. Like, for example, when the fish fish is swimming, so, you know, you see, see how the fish is swimming, so you are asking them to track along. And also, uh, you know, looking through books along with the child. Some of, uh, some of the techniques to enhance auditory awareness is like, uh, you know, identifying sounds around the house, like when the doorbell rings, they know the dad is coming. So, and, uh, you know, uh, you can see sounds outside, like do uh, the car horns, the dog barking, so asking your child to listen to loud and soft no, uh, music, these are how you can uh, enhance the visual and auditory awareness. Sorry. Imitation skills also play a very good role in the communicative skills. Like imitation of actions is the child's ability to copy actions that has been shown to him. Uh, so imitation of sounds is also very important. So it starts with actions. So you can uh, see like in many of my session, I start with, you know, uh, everybody knows the song. If you're happy, uh, you can clap your hands. If you're happy, you snap. So you can do a lot of imitations uh, with this particular song. So usually children like to listen to songs. So, you know, when they listen to songs, they, they are, they, they pay attention and they try to imitate actions also. So you have to uh, that, uh, encourage them to imitate, imitate actions. So when you start doing actions, slowly you can see that they, they imitate sounds also. Like, uh, for example, if you see Old MacDonald and all, if you're going to sing, that song, that, that pattern of sounds can always, uh, they imitate those patterns. Okay. So am I going a little fast? So please stop me if I'm going a little fast. Uh, I hope it's uh, okay. Okay, speed or shall I slow down myself? Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, because, you know, sometimes I'm not able to see anybody, so I just go on my pace. <laughs> uh, so next was uh, turn-taking skills. So uh, uh, that also, like uh, many a times we find that our children don't like to wait for their turn. They want to do everything first. You give a toy, if you have two children sitting together, they don't like to wait for their turn. They want to do the toy first before the other child touches it. So uh, turn taking has to be taught to children. They, it is very important. Like, you know, you wait for your turn, you know, if suppose, uh, you know, you are playing a game like a piggy bank. So you have a few kids or you and your kid are going to play. You teach them turn taking, saying that, okay, it's mommy's turn to put the coin. Now it's your turn to put the coin. So this is how you build up uh, a turn taking skill. So that can even uh, pass, uh, be taught through social stories also. So, uh, so, you know, uh, in social stories, you tell them how the, uh, you know, uh, how a person waits for the turn. Those are also ways that you can teach uh, turn takers. And that plays a very important role in communicators. Because when it comes to communication, see, now I'm talking. But if somebody else is talking to me, I wait. And then I listen to that person. So turn taking skills, is, uh, it's a primitive skills for our uh, later development. Game ideas to work on building, uh, uh, it's a building block for communication. Like uh, you, we think, you know, play is important, but some plays like even tickle game, 
that is that plays a real i have found a lot of changes when i started playing bubbles tickle games pop puppets and finger puppets all those you know you can find that those children have you know start uh, coming uh, communicating to you it might start with a very mild non verbal communication but slowly you can see that they start imitating a few words you say from that because uh, uh, for example uh, in some kids when i use bubble i say pop the bubble so now they they have learned the word bubble by by just started with a play you know you see the bubble just going and popping the bubble but now the child says pop the bubble so that's how it develops so it's very important you can play and uh, uh, teach the child like you know when you play a car so you roll the car and you say see the car goes fast Brrr. so you make a lot of sounds in it so you are trying to teach the child a lot of things through game okay so the next slide uh ways to improve communication so we were actually talking about the building blocks that is like initial step before you even start communicating communicative skills now how to improve the communication now you you are started doing communication skills how do we improve it first rule is we have to speak very slowly don't be too much fast when you talk to your children use very simple language like you know uh, instead of lengthy explanation uh, you know uh, and directions you have to cut the uh, uh, sent uh, sentences into short like for example uh, you, you you need to say okay go put this there uh, it is uh, it is go, you know put on your uh, uh, shirt it's very uh, it's very cold outside or something like that then what the child is too much of information for a child to learn so you have to make it very simple put on your dress then maybe you can say see it's very cold outside so then the child understands it's cold put on shirt or put shirt make the language as simple for the child's level for the child to understand sometimes we tend to give too much of instructions and we expect the child to catch it up the child catches here and there a few words and then the meaning is not conveyed in the right way and uh, also we have to give emphasis on some words that is important in that particular sentence like you give a little highlight or emphasis to that word so if you say uh, uh, the the book is on the table go see see table book is on the table so you're giving emphasis on the word table and then you give whatever so first the child looks at the table and then you give emphasis on the word book so the child goes to the table the child relates book table now give me give me so you you make it simple and you give emphasis so that the child listens to you uh now another thing is you have to break information into small chunks when you when you say okay go to that room pick up the uh, pick up amma's bag and come so the child can't follow sometimes so you need to break the information go to room then you go there okay very good now pick up amma's bag so you you break the information or when you are actually describing a, a sentence uh, sometimes you know we give lot of descriptions to a particular picture where the main sentence that has to be learned by the child child goes uh, it, it it doesn't uh, you know sometimes the child is not able to listen to the whole content so we have to see how short and how Uh, how we can break the sentences and then try to convey the meaning next is like non verbal clues see uh, we uh, we have to give a little importance to the non verbal clues uh, like you know uh, um, like pictures gestures body language facial expression these can be used to assist child understanding and recall the instructions like sometimes when you just say go there they might not understand but you know sometimes uh, when you say uh, pick it up so when you if you use a visual clue that helps the child to understand okay we are going to the market what's a market the child might think what's a market so then when you show the picture okay we are going to market then the child visualizes what the market is so adding non verbal clues like visual uh, uh, clues or giving a gesture some uh, facial expressions can add to their Uh, information 
and also you have to do a lot of repetitions you need to uh, you know you say it one time no try to repeat it one or two times for the child to understand it that helps the child to improve the communication and also it also develops the child to learn that particular language to use it elsewhere create a good environment for the child when you are as i told you earlier see the place you are sitting how is the environment is it filled with too much of distractions is there um, like you know there is too many things around too many um, uh, distractors around then they will not be able to pay attention so you have to ha see that uh, it is uh, it is the room has to be with minimal distractions and it should be uh, a, a comfortable place where the child is able to listen to you okay so that and also it should be very uh, a little on the lightings all that is very important when you uh, when you prepare the child for teaching something or you know learning a good communication skill so uh, you have social stories yes this is one big thing that we can it helps especially children with spectrum it really works with them so social stories are essential because they can significantly improve the way the child relate to others they help them to learn what to do and like um, if suppose the child is angry and uh, the the child has anger issues or the child doesn't know how to express anger so you try to develop a social story to teach him how to express the anger he can't push everything he can't throw everything he can't uh, beat somebody when he is angry so he needs to know how to how to manage his uh, skills or or the child has uh, some uh, uh, behavioral issues you want to correct a particular behavior you can use social stories to correct so it also provides tools to teach uh, kids with special needs <coughs> to make and maintain friendship as well uh, and as they are in the group activities like you know you can tell them how to uh, build a good uh, relationship like you know you say hello so all that you know uh, they they learn through social stories you you uh, we have made social stories for greeting we have made social stories for uh, cutting nails hair cutting and you know uh, how to behave when they go out so there are lots of social stories for even you know to teach them brushing their daily routines you have social stories for this so that actually helps them a lot uh, children with autism may not have a good social skill but the social stories uh, through social stories they can learn and develop these skills and uh, they you have uh, another part is active listening we have to be an active listener i know now you all are active listeners so <laughs> sometimes when our kids speak we try to you know come in between we come to come in uh, between we jump and say okay one minute one minute let me tell you that's not you allow the child to you know uh, you know finish the sentence don't rush in problem solving wait be slow prompt your child to tell how he feels let him try so you have to be a good listener you have to actually show them that you are listening to them and the last uh, is create opportunities you know sometimes when we don't create opportunities they don't know that they need to communicate also because uh, there is them the, the intent comes only when you create opportunity like for example uh, you want your child to say ta you place that object you know the child goes picks up the water bottle and drinks but how would you you know uh, help the child to verbalize or to point you have to keep the object at a level where the child can't reach so that the child initiates to uh, give uh, opportunity uh, you have to create an opportunity for the child to communicate that helps a lot okay so that was uh, about the verbal part now many at times we are not worried about non verbal communication what about non non verbal kids kids who can't speak what do they do how do they communicate so that strategy is called augmentative and alternative communication 
so a it's uh, shortly called as aac so aac includes like a variety of tools and strategies that can be used with individual who have difficulty with verbal communication they may not be able to speak so you use an alternative way to communicate so for example using gestures sign language uh, like some voice output device picture or symbol systems communication based uh, computer based communication systems so these uh, aac systems uh, are, uh, can help especially autistic children to develop the spoken language and give them a communication options so what they do is they um, uh, they are not able to speak so what happens if they don't uh, if they are not able to speak they are not given an opportunity to communicate so what do they do they need some alternative right so you have to give them that opportunity to communicate so uh, you can uh, there are uh, there are some uh, ac devices like gestures uh, like uh, you use hand gestures like you know uh, pointing or you nod uh, we all nod and say yes and no so that is also a sort of gesture so though and uh, you know uh, pointing is another side sort of gestures so this these are some gestures that we can be used uh, like for some kids who can't uh, use any mode of communication then we use such, such gestures for them to uh, communicate like you know we give them patting or we give them some sort of uh, a head postures so for them to communicate to say that okay this is yes and this is no so uh, those sort of way also are there to communicate visual support like uh, that is very very important uh, like you know for any children a visual uh, support adds a lot especially for autistic kids visual support is a very very added blessing in their life because they learn a lot through visual vocabulary so Uh, so visuals can include communication books or board and the child can point to the uh, the image and they can communicate like for example if the child is thirsty and uh, the child points to the image of a glass of water and then he communicates saying that he wants water so uh, another visual support is the visual schedule which i follow a lot and our uh, children with asd really uh, uh, benefit a lot from visual schedules like uh, you they because they don't like any change all of a sudden so you can teach them what is their routine what happens in the uh, in the day schedule so this is what you get up in the morning you brush your teeth you take a bath so next we are going this place next we will go to this so this is the routine or if there is any change in the routine and you want to take them somewhere you still show them something and say that okay we are not going this place instead we are going to this place so the child is uh, child is prepared the child knows how to manage that particular situation and uh, uh, th- that will help them to calm them down also that that helps them in their behavior also communication books are also very important and uh, nowadays we have lots of Uh, speed generation devices like you know you have pre recorded voice uh, you can communicate by pressing a switch or you have uh, 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 something like a tab and you know you can have lots of uh, pictures in it and uh, how you can uh, point at that picture and communicate to others like you have avatar uh, prolog to so there are so many apps like that which has come some people use pic- uh, pics like picture exchange communicator systems like where you have pictures the child ex- uh, gives the picture to the other person and ask for things so that is also one way to communicate so to conclude uh, we have to i mean uh, just to say that you have to keep talking to your child talk that is things about their environment don't go to talk about naming animals birds uh you know which is not there around them at all talk about things around them because those are the things that they need to communicate practice receptive identification like you know when they are having something in their hand help them to identify that thing 
help them to name that thing help them to express that thing by pointing at a picture or saying the word use a lot of prompts so that they are encouraged to communicate to you give them opportunities and use a lot of high interest items because children learn first when there is lots of high interest. so even when i develop a communication book for some of the children i tell the parents to put the high interest items first in their books and because they need to learn what communication is then start putting adding whatever they want so when child learns to communicate they are no longer demonstrating challenging behaviors to achieve this we must teach communicative strategies and serve the same purpose as behavior therapy and thank you that's it i, I hope uh, it was clear and uh, good any doubts please yeah very nice explanation thank you <laughs> hopefully i i don't know i think i i didn't use a lot of tamil because i was trying to use but then that flow comes only for me in english so i don't know whether it was uh, whether some people could i think arsna told me in between if you can use a little tamil but you know i'm so fluent in english i'm not getting that tamil in between no i'm um, it was very nice ma'am very informative uh, presentation with everyday examples this is very nice uh ma'am i have a question yeah, uh, one of my known boy i have a, uh, he is autistic mild borderline autistic is quite verbally good but uh, uh, that is tamil la vande na neethi inga pone apdi solradhukku badal nee apdi use pannuvaanga na enga la varanumo anga la nee use pannuva is that related to communication Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, again, no, it's not related. To, it's related to communication in the sense the language is is having issue there. It is not uh, because there is a issue with the language and the and the uh, the person. You know, ni na onak yenak avanga apni ne solnu bode. That is uh, not generalized for them. They are not able to generalize. Are they? When they you start tagging names. then it's easier for them because name under bodu oralku or name da illa appa vande na na apdi solli keta appa vande change pannipa or point out panna unna still but every time he makes illa hmm. adha generalization skills problem irukkaradunala da na avanukku he is able to understand the concept because you are saying he is understanding but he still not generalized it because adhu vande especially spectrum la irukkara pasangalukku adhu romba ve issue adhu other okay. we are teaching some language skills to uh, uh, train them on that so he needs speech therapy right yeah yeah they he will need speech therapy language training especially okay okay thank you ma'am yes yes ma'am shilpa ma'am Shilpa, ma'am, are you there? I can see your hand is raised. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi. 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 Yes. Uh, Hi. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, thanks for your speech. Uh, it was uh, really informative. Uh, my uh, son, ha- my son is eight, nine years old, and uh, he, uh, we've been giving speech therapy for since uh, uh, two and a half months. I mean, uh, yeah, two and a half years. Sorry. Uh, so em payan ku enna na like uh, he was born with a cleft lip and okay. uh, they told us uh, he uh, his cleft palate the palate was intact na sonnanga initially mm. uh, uh, and then uh, they told us that we need to give us speech therapy which uh, of course we are doing it from 2 uh, and a half years as i told you but mm. um, uh, just recently like 2 uh, years back we found like uh, you know his uh, he's got a submucous uh, palate Oh, okay. Hmm. Ah, so like, and uh, when I approached the uh, cleft, uh, the smile div- division, uh, they told me like this, this is not going to hinder his uh, speech though. In a language is first thing which you have to uh, bring in for the child, and then next next thing will only be the speech. And then I we 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 uh, actually we wanted to check. I wanted to check with you, like even when even now when we are doing speech therapy, we are going to a uh, normal speech therapist. We are not uh, specialized for any cleft, uh, you know, uh, related uh, speech therapist. And the Marie, that she is, can they could not get it? So, do you think that we should approach somebody like that, or a normal speech therapist uh, therapy would do for him? See, speech therapy. Uh... 
ஆரம்பிக்கிற <laughs> um and the mari uh, you know sat you know something like that where he has to use his tongue and the where he used to use his upper and the palate use pandra ah, ilvand adha da ama so uh, uh, sometimes uh, sorry ma'am illa சொல்லுங்க <laughs> 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 so i don't know whether it is on purpose he is doing it or he just wants to finish it adnala avan solrana theriyala but he do can pronounce it as a rat rat you know okay. he can do that okay so, so how i uh, help him yeah. uh can you hear me my video is yes ma'am yes ma'am please tell me yes ma'am okay uh, so uh the the issue here is uh, uh, i would say like he is when he reads he is conscious he knows mm-hmm. the uh, he knows the context that he is reading right so apa enna aguduna he avanukku nalla theriyudhu idu padikkano namba adha practice pannadha avanukku theriyudhu so he relates to it but when it comes to spontaneous speech that will be affected because it comes very spontaneous and it doesn't think at that time okay got okay. it so it is not uh, intentional but it is very much uh, you know he is not aware what he is doing so when but when you i think when he if you give reminders he might correct but again that uh, he, what did you say his age is he is 9 years old ma'am 9 years he had a delay in speech of course yes yes So, he's uh, a autistic so, uh, he's uh, yeah. he's so autistic there is a delay in speech everything would be delayed the sound acquisition also will be a delay so that is the uh, pattern okay so okay. Uh, the r sound again has r because it is a palatal sound so that touching the palate so there is mm-hmm. a gap so that air escapes there so then that r becomes a little no mm yeah so uh with practice it is only with the repetition and practice that he is going to find the uh, change it has to be because he he would have practiced the particular sound over a particular year and then suddenly okay. you are saying uh, it to change what will happen it is habitual adu avlo naal palagitom and the habit a maathrona konja time edukum with adanal da avan the context irukra edathula he is doing it correctly and when it is very spontaneous he is doing it but he will change with practice மேம் <laughs> i just want to clarify him. see I... Uh, i have tried visual uh, visual uh, behavior visual learning okay so something like you know i have prepared uh, like when you say no pinching uh, that doesn't uh, you should show something else right so yes. if you want to pinch like uh, is he coming under the spectrum uh, he has some mild features ma'am he's, he has having adhd okay. and has mild okay. features of autism so again uh, what you what you can do is he might have the sensory issue of pinching something so in that case also he might do it so i i am not sure because i have not seen the child i'm just giving you some of the situations so what you can do is you can give him a visual uh, card saying when he pinches you can I, i tried this with many kids and it did work you can try it you can make a visual scary when he pinches somebody you can take a picture and say you know it's a wrong behavior 
put a big wrong for that and say it's a wrong behavior and you teach him what is the right behavior so if he wants to pinch maybe you can give him a, a clay or something ask him to pinch on that you're not pinching on people okay okay mm. so that uh, that visual clue immediately gives him her a, a recall of what he has to do or what he shouldn't do okay 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 so uh, always when you teach something is wrong teach what is right also okay thank you thank you ma'am okay yeah ma'am you were you were talking about visual awareness something an uh, auditory auditory yeah so yeah. how to make that uh, into into practice See, visual awareness is nothing but preparing some uh, you know uh, uh, whatever you do like you prepare a picture book go along with them teaching them to look at the picture uh, talk about that picture so giving a lot of visual clues like we now i said also is a lot of visual awareness like teaching them with a visual clue to enhance a particular skill okay. teaching some object with using a visual clue auditory clue is like even teaching with using the sounds around you like you know if you want to know relate like daddy is coming doorbell ringing or you know uh, if you want to wash your hands see the tap water is leaking so you listen there's a tap water so you making them aware of different sounds so okay. they relate to that particular word so tap hmm. water okay so with sounds you're trying to teach them the word also the other one is with visual clues thank you so much now it's very helpful Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Aha, who's that? <laughs> My son was <laughs> saying. So <laughs> ma'am, we have some. Uh, we've collected a few questions from parents, ma'am. So we would like you to answer them. Okay. Ma'am, till what age we can try speech therapy? Maximum. See, there is. Uh, I would not say any age because right now even I am seeing ch child at the age of eighteen also. So there is not limited, but there is. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, that you should do at this stage and should not do at this age. It is all stimulating environment for the child. Any age the child learns uh, is going to be a stimulating environment. Okay, so okay, there is you. no age limitations. You you can do therapy at any age, but there are uh, restrictions as to how much we can get out of it. But still, uh, learning happens. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, he's a little bit stage as well. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now for the questions, ma'am, I'll yeah. just read it out. Hi, my son is ten years old. He is in. Echolalia stage for the past Same. three years. Uh, before that, he used to say one word for his needs alone. After the COVID, we started with speech therapy for past nine months, but there is no big improvement. He is still in parrot speech. We are working on it. When we ask him again and again, he refuses to talk and closes his ears. Can you give me your suggestions? This is from the Sauri Prasad, mother of Krishna. Yes, okay so here uh, uh, in this case what happens is like you know it is more of uh, sensory also involved in it uh, you know like they like to hear the sounds so some sort of auditory feedback is needed for the child so we need to work on that also along with this so echolalia is a a, a feature of Uh, or, uh, in the spectrum, so we have to tune them. See, nine months, all many children. Uh, uh, maybe that way of teaching has to change a little bit for them to uh, overcome echolalia. What happens is many times we tell them sol, uh, the solen soli to be say the word. They learn the word with sol itself. Like many times, if the sol, amma ta sol, abhi na they will they will keep telling amma ta sol. We have to model what the child says. Echolalia, especially, I have tried where we model what the child alone has to say and not attach what we have to ask them to say. Then that helps them a lot. But again, uh, in this case, we have to do a lot of a little bit of OT intervention. Also, is necessary for this child. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay. Uh, to the next question uh, mm -hmm. from Meera Balaji ma'am herself okay so what age is ideal for a child to speak I think I've answered the question okay. she asked me directly yeah, yeah. when uh, speech difficulties and uh, when speech difficulties are there how to overcome it when speech difficulties are there how to overcome it. Overcome I, that's the whole presentation that I did. I think you know, yes, each and every step, if they follow, they can really develop a very good uh, speech skills because the language and, uh, you know, if you see for communication to develop, speech, language has play a role. So again, speech, it doesn't mean that expressive language has to be verbal only. It can be non-verbal also. So we have to see where we are missing out on. Are we missing out on the non-verbal behaviors? Are we missing out on, we are, are we em emphasizing only on the verbal behaviors? We have to see what our child is tuned to. Give emphasis on what the child likes to do. And then you will find that the child comes out beautifully. Like when uh, uh, I can say an example where, you know, maybe few years back, some I think more than 10 to 12 years back, I used to be also a very traditional speech that we say, okay, only verbal, verbal, verbal. But uh, sometimes, you know, with some with respect to my therapy, some sessions have really, some children have actually taught me that, you know, I can also communicate using a written text. Why do you want me to say the word? And he was, he was writing much more, uh, uh, much more uh, clearly than I could really think that he could do because I was teaching him word level. He was actually writing to me in sentence level. So the language level was very high, but he didn't want to do the verbal mode. But we were all focusing on the verbal mode. When we tried to teach him a different method to speak, then he was happy and he started communicating more. So uh, speech skills uh, uh, develops uh, it, it, it's it's like you know uh, you have to give a correct environment you have to find what the child likes and then if you go I think it works much better and for all that our language level has to be intact okay ma'am what okay. is your advice for stuttering uh, okay stuttering itself has its own therapy so you have to uh, 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 we have uh, therapies for stuttering per se. They ha they have they have to come for sessions with speech therapists, and uh, we and it does help, but it doesn't cure. We can't say fully cure, but it is. They will learn a lot of managing strategies, and they go forward with it. For some, it does uh, vanish for a while, but some for some it reoccurs after a while. But they know how to manage it. But they have to go for speech therapy. It is not a, you know, I can't just say one word and then it doesn't get over. It has a sequence of procedures. Uh, this is from Mrs. Lakshmi, mother of Amudan. Uh, the question goes, if I ask any questions, he was talking out of context about a cartoon show he watched yesterday. How to change his speech to be effective? See, that is what I was talking about, the pre, uh, no, the building blocks, the listening skills has to be really intact there. See, uh, uh, he, he wouldn't have paid attention to what the mother said and or there wouldn't have been a proper conveying of meaning happened at that stage. He would have been thinking of something, but she would have asked the question verbally. He needed a verbal, so if he falls in the spectrum, if you give him a visual clue, that gives a more uh, organized way for the child to reply rather than asking the question okay what did you do uh, in school so you show him some pictures ask him okay did you do this or did you do this then it makes more meaning because he's already lost uh, moreover these cartoons and these uh, uh, the videos which children watch you know that stays in their mind and they keep repeating that so they are having an engaged play already happening in their mind and you are targeting on something else 
for example if we are engaged with some thought process and somebody is asking us something we don't even tend to listen to them so with respect to us we are justifying us because we are lost in our thoughts similarly kids also are like that so we have to first bring their attention to what we are trying to say that's what i said no some of the strategies at uh, making fixing a good eye contact getting a good listening from them that's when you can start the whole thing otherwise you know they get lost okay ma'am uh one more question that uh, uh from the same child uh he is always talking about actor's birthday and his friend's birthday and if ever a stranger speaks to him he asks about their age uh, the child is always curious about age and dates so uh, the mother has told him this is all garbage knowledge and you have to throw it in the dustbin no one will appreciate you is this the correct way of responding the parents wants to know whether this is the correct no response. no that's not the correct way to uh, because uh, that is the child's high interest numbers are the child's high interest so you have to see how you can balance with the high interest and get them to work on the other areas uh, shutting them down on the high interest cannot help them to move forward because that shuts them down from communicating to you also because for them it is like discouraging them so when you discourage them how are they going to come to you they will say no okay if i say this they are going to say don't do this then i don't want to do anything so you have to see how you okay you are asking age but why do we have to know age let's ask uncle's name so you know how you can tune it good okay we will ask the age after we ask the name so let's ask uncle please so that's how we can bring it rather than saying okay no this is not uh, correct this is so that's why i said even for uh, uh, i think one more person who asked me i think pravina asked me uh, what do i do so i said give a visual say, saying that uh, no this is not the right behavior but when you say no what is the right behavior the child expects that you don't give a blank no to the child this is my practical experience that i have learned when you say no to the child the child gets lost the child even doesn't even care okay you're saying no okay he becomes more aggressive or throws another tantrum or finds another way to get your attention but if you say no but you give a right uh, way to lead forward then they calm down little more better but it takes a long time it's not that one day you do and it's going to change slowly slowly you have to tune them that way yeah ma'am avas is a app for non verbal kids do you think uh, non verbal kids can use that app very well i have been using avas with many kids and it really worked but there are some prerequisites for avas so you should no some uh, says if we use that app they may stop talking completely that's what i said there are some prerequisites first thing is they, they you have to see how their language is second thing is how you use avas i have used avas to even develop speech it is not that avas is to uh, only for non verbal kids it is okay. to stimulate speech environment for them see uh, i i start communication books with children as early as possible okay and i tell parents i am not starting communication books because your child is going to become non verbal the child would be a verbal child but how to teach them what is communication how to teach them how to communicate what do they do they don't know if i want water i keep telling him sollu water sollu tharen water sollu tharen the child also knows water sollu tharen water sollu tharen so that is how they are programmed to use it because mm. we are teaching them apple sollu ball sollu so they learn it that way okay they are not uh, learning it in a different way they, so we have to see how we teach and avas is i use first no more than any other uh, aacs i use avas a lot and avas really works with many kids in a good way for non verbal kids also for verbal kids but we have to see how we use it you can you don't have to expose the whole avas machine you have to organize it in a very very beautiful way to a structured way for the child and then start giving exposing them to avas you can't give the avas once you download the whole thing there is hundreds of mm. pictures you don't need the whole thing you have to erase you have to know which one to give and which not to give you have to make the avas a little customized for the child okay achana i think we need a separate session okay. to learn how to use avas definitely <laughs> sure sure yeah
Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, there is a, there is a conference coming up on uh, uh, this itself. So we have. Uh, I mean, I am working for another place called Hamsa Rehab also. So we are coming up with a autism conference with the intervention strategies alone. So in that, there is one person from Avas coming to teach Avas itself on AAC itself. So I will share the details with Archana. So anybody who is interested yeah, sure. uh, can join because there is lots of intervention strategies for autism per se. Yes. That is, you know, how group intervention works, how yeah. um, uh, you know how parent program works, how OT uh, OTL. What is that? Uh, there is different uh, uh, brain gym works. Mm-hmm. How uh, there is an auditory listening uh, uh, therapy. So those how that works. So we have all experienced people coming for that particular. It's coming on twenty eighth of this month. So I'll okay. share it with Archana. Yeah, so sure. any of the parents who are interested can register uh, and uh, get. It is a free session or paid? No, no, it's a paid session because uh, it's uh, yeah, it's not a free session. Yeah. It's a paid session. Okay, fine, fine. Yes, uh, thank I'll you, ma'am. And I'll send the details. Yeah. Yes, please. Amen. If there is group, if you are having a lot of group people, you let me know. I can uh, talk to the management and get a discount for you. Okay, ma'am. One last question from Mr. Sure. Govind, uh, father of Arulmani Varman. Uh, yeah. So the question is: My son Arul, age seven years four months, is a non-verbal. He does not have any auditory problems and can make sound, express emotions vocally, but he's Stubborn about speech. He's been undergoing speech therapy since age three. How to improve? Okay. See, that is what I said some time back. There is a child who I had. The child was not interested in speaking itself. So it doesn't mean that we should not allow them to communicate. So when there is a speech uh, deficit, we have to see how we can bring communication skills and uh, uh, make them. Understand that uh, through other communication modes, make them understand that verbal place, verbal can also be a mode of communication. So right now, what the focus is happening, I assume, is the parent is focusing only on the verbal mode. They are not touching or seeing the non-verbal mode. So what happens? The child's non-verbal path is actually getting cut short. But I think when we touch the non-verbal path, like I said, Meera Ma'am, like we will be able to get more emphasis on the verbal mode also. So I think that is somewhere we have to work in balanced way. They should not cut off. Yeah. Ma'am, one more question: Non-verbal children, how they can be trained to be independent? See, uh, it takes a, a lot of procedures. It's lots of steps, but they become independent. Like you, like how uh, we were talking about ours. Ours is one uh, gadget that that can actually help them to be independent because they start communicating using the app, the app, and it has lots of things. You can actually customize it according to your uh, age, your uh, wherever you go, how your environment is. You can customize it, and then uh, they become a lot more independent. Okay. Um, so. Thank you very much, ma'am. It was a very informative and a very enriching session. Uh, full you. about uh, uh, speech and language pathology and speech therapy. Very uh, essential for all of us. And uh, thank you very much for accepting our invite at such a short notice and uh, for being here today. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Doesn't thank you, it. thank you so much, and uh, it's my pleasure again. So yeah. anything else you can? Uh, I think Arshana has my number in case anybody wants any other doubts to be definitely, contacted. ma'am. Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Nice okay. to get connected, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye.